Okay, okay. So, I slept most of the day and, you know, my first day of the season was a nightmare. But my brother helped me a little bit and we farmed a little bit together and I finally managed to put a farming build for my monk. And before I explain anything, I will just show you how fast and how par powerful this thing is. So. It cannot be done. Okay, there is a elite, and the elite is dead. We are doing Greater Rift 75, so it's D16. And this build literally works with everything in GRs, uh, bounties, and works for Niflim Rifts. So you can't go wrong with this build. I just want you to look and appreciate how fast this build is. Okay, I didn't die. Usually the explosions just gets me for some reason, I don't know why. I'm just too lazy to move. But with these infinite dashes, it's just hard not to move, you know. Okay, we got pylon. Of course pylons won't be very useful for you at this low level. But they will help, of course. Okay, power pylon. Things will just melt. Hello, Rift Guardian. And boom. Rift Guardian just died. Okay, let's upgrade our gems. As you can see, my gems are really low. They are barely 30. 30 and some change. And let's see, how fast was that? Okay, 1 minute and 28 seconds. And this is the best run that I've done so far. Okay, so this is a water ally build. And you need the six, six, the six set bonus of N. And as you can see, this is a baby monk. And I only, I'm not even 600 paragons. And my gear, no ancients at all except for this weapon. And I'm using this weapon only because it's ancient. And the setup is very basic and very easy to get. And the, the beauty about this build that it's not picky. You didn't need you don't need ancients, you don't need high paragons, you don't need high gems. Like look at me, I'm literally using like uh, not even the max dexterity gems in my gear. So no high paragon, no high gems, no high legendary gems, no ancients, and I'm just plastic through T16 already. And I'm pretty sure if I want to push it further. Uh, I can do what GR100 now. It just, you know, because I need to clear them one by one if I'm not playing in a group or something. So that's going to take some time. So, okay. So the core setup, as I said, like you literally need only the six pieces of N and you need Ingium as a weapon and any other weapon. It doesn't matter what other weapon you could use. You could use Echoing Fury, you could use literally any other one-handed weapon that you want. And for the rings, you can... The, the most important ring is Obsidian Ring. Other rings doesn't matter, you can use literally any ring you want. Uh, for the amulet, you can go with Squirt Necklace, Flavor of Time, uh, Ace of Johan, or Traveler Bledge with Compass Rose. Like, you can go with anything, it doesn't matter. For the shoulder, I think this shoulder is very important because it will give you, I'm not sure how to spell it, it's Leaf Beavers something. So whenever you do a Cyclone Strike, you will gain damage reduction up to 50%. Yes, up to 50%. And yeah, this is the core setup for the cube. Also in the cube, like, you only need the Curtis Boots for your Mystic Allies. Uh... 
for me, for the weapon, you can go with the, the weapon that gives you, you know, the whenever you kill an enemy, you will get uh, CDR or something. But literally, you can go with any weapon that could give you CDR or damage. And for the nick, for the jewelry slot, I went with squirt necklace. You can go with whatever you want, really, of the amulets that we mentioned before. For the pressers, you can go, actually you can just play without a presser at all. You can just throw it and play without a presser. Uh, the bindings of the lesser gods is good. It will give you, actually it's for the fire rune, but it would still it will give you 200% more damage after you cyclone strike your enemies. Or you can go, actually, you can go with the nemesis pressers if your follower is not wearing one or you are not playing with uh, nemesis. You can go with strong arm, you will get 30% increased damage whenever you do cyclone strike to an enemy. Or you can go with this uh, words chain arm guards. It, whenever you break a recable object, you will just, you know, get some movement speed. And it's, that's going to be pretty good for you. But you know, the build is already speedy. You don't need more movement speed. Because we are getting ton of movement speed from Ingium, from our uh, mantra. And I think from the gems. So yeah, for gems, like I'm using, uh, in my head, I'm using Fragment of Destruction. And in my weapon, one of my weapons, I'm using Drags, it, or Drags of Lies, I think. It's called Drags of Lies. So my bits will do the damage for me. They will do the bad deed for me. And I will just be, you know, running around and, you know, just killing everything. For the spells, uh, for, you need Cyclone Strike Implosion. So whenever you pull an enemy, the enemies will just, whenever you hit Cyclone Strike, you will gain, you will pull all the enemies around you. And they will, uh, they will take uh, more damage from your allies and for your primary you can literally go with anything it doesn't matter you can go with empathy oh sorry with epiphany and if you feel that you don't need epiphany you can go with something to give you more let's say like serenity if you feel like you are too squishy so of course dashing strike uh, Quicksilver, you will need the dashes, but whenever you kill an enemy or an elite enemy, you will have infinite dashes for 15 seconds or for 10 seconds, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, for your epiphany, we already talked about it, and of course, mystic allies, you need to go with water allies, the cold one. And finally, for the mantra, like you can go with the mantra of uh, convention, conviction, sorry, annihilation. So you will have some speed. You can go with the healing one, with the damage one, or with the salvation damage reduction one. It's up to you, really. Like this, this build, you literally can just throw a few pieces of the gear and you could just unpoint some of these abilities and you will still be farming GR100 easily with some, you know, some optimization. So yeah, like I will be linking my profile in the description so you can take it as a reference to look at it to see the stats. Uh, my stats are not very, very, very optimized. I think they are decent, not so good but they are not so bad as well and my paragon not, is not even 600 and you can actually get 500 paragons the very first like day playing the season so it's not a huge deal for the paragon points in your core you just go for movement speed and then dexterity for your offense go with cooldown reduction attack speed and the crits, or actually you can skip the cooldown reduction, just go with attack speed and crits. Attack speed, you need your pets to attack faster. And for the defense, you... Hmm. Well, you just need to avoid 
resist all at the start or you can actually go with resist all yeah yeah just go with resist all actually you should go with resist all and then armor and then life and life regeneration for your utility you don't need a resource cost reduction um, it's full here I filled it all because I, I was playing another build Templest Rush it's so resource hungry so so basically you can go with area damage here and life per hit then resource cost reduction then gold pickup radius or whatever it doesn't really matter actually if you are going to farm niflims then go with gold gold pickup radius especially if you don't have a rice band so again as i said this build is jack of all trades you can do bounties you can go niflim rifts you can go with grs and if you modify a little bit of it it could go faster or it could do more damage or it could just have more toughness it's up to you and up to your style and for the passives we will go with near death experience so we will instead of getting one shot we will just you know survive it and seize of the initiative and that's you know we'll gain attack speed whenever we attack an enemy uh, above 75 percent so basically we are always attacking enemies and we will always have this buff on us the 30 percent attack speed and relentless assault of course because our allies our water allies will freeze the enemies so we'll get this 20 percent juicy more damage all the time on the enemies and of course bacon of eater to reduce all cooldowns by 20 percent also between all these passives the most important one damage wise is uh i think this one the relentless assault you can skip all of them near death experience is fine for the gems i'm going with Ben of the trapped and i'm going with Ben of the powerful and the enforcer you can go with this molten wild beats yp wild beasts gizzard so you will get like instead of getting one shot you will just uh, have a shield and survive it so basically you will have three second chances with the enchantress one and for the playstyle you basically you just enter the rift you dash to your enemy you do cyclone strike to get the damage reduction buff you attack and then you you hit your mystic allies so you will start doing these waves thingy of course activate your epiphany and activate your mantra if you want to even if you didn't activate it it won't matter much and that's that's it this is the whole build it's very easy it's very clear you can build it in like two hours and you can just start farming uh t16 immediately so i hope that was helpful and i will be uploading the video now and i will share it with you guys okay happy farming